As you now know from the Neuronist Painkill video, the various individuals of Ein's Orgon enjoyed the opportunity to create their own legion of evil minions to go along with the supervillain theme that they had going. While some created cute waifus or maids, and others went for gag characters, some preferred a terrifying, grotesque, or creepy monster instead. And the five worst are the quintessential example of just this. So join me as we take a look at the rest of the most evil, most ugly, most supposedly terrifying creatures of Nazarick that each bear the title of the worst. But first, Kakao Games was kind enough to sponsor me for a second time. So in case you missed it last time, Black Desert Online is an immersive sandbox-oriented action-packed MMORPG that I can confidently say has one of the most beautifully designed seamless open worlds with astonishing graphics, especially after the remaster update. On top of that, it has highly fluid real-time action-based combat, open world PvP mixed with large-scale siege wars, part of which could even be naval warfare. Lots of crafting, life skilling, housing, and economy systems to add to the game's immersion, and an insanely detailed character creation system with now 17 unique classes to choose from, each with their own skills and abilities. Speaking of which, the newest class of male archer was just released on the 12th of December. And let me tell you, the hybrid close quarter long range gameplay his kit provides is not only a visual pleasure to watch, but also plays as smooth as it looks. He's equipped with both a crossbow and a longbow, providing for an assortment of stylish ranged attacks and magic skills at his disposal. New classes aren't all they're adding either. Expansions like the recently released Dragon One are under development, alongside the Shadow Arena Battle Royale Survival Mode and the Territory Wars PvP Mode. So go ahead and use the link in the description to get a 7 day free trial of Black Desert Online today. Now, let's begin. From a general view, the 5 worst is a group of lesser known low level NPCs within Nazarick. The name itself derives from the fact that they were designed by their creators to embody something downright awful or terrifying. Things that their creators were personally afraid of, or nightmare fuel intended to spook the rest of the guild members. Of the remaining four types of worst, we have the worst residence, worst appearance, worst personality, and worst error. Now, even though I'm already sure you're expecting a whole bunch of grotesque things, here's a not safe for life warning anyway, as we may cover some subject matter that could derive slight miscomfort. Starting us off, we have Kyohuko, officially translated as Prince of Fear. He's the level 30 area guardian of the Black Capsule, located on the second floor of the Catacombs. Ironically, despite being explicitly designed as Nightmare Fuel, he's one of the NPCs who are relatively neutral in Karma rating, at negative 10. The fact that it's still negative means he tilts slightly in the direction of evil rather than good, but only ever so slightly. He comes across as the pragmatic sort, more than willing to negotiate with others to reach a mutually beneficial agreement, or even help them out if there's no major cost to his assistance. For instance, in one side story released as bonus material, he helped out Hanske when she had gotten lost in the catacombs, providing her a cockroach escort to guide her back to where she needed to go. He's also good friends with Kakitis, another insectoid guardian, who, as you know, also has a relatively neutral outlook on things. In any case, neutral karma ratings represent the middle ground between evil and good. Kyohoko doesn't try to spread misery and suffering like those who are evil would, but he also doesn't go out of his way to help people he doesn't know, or doesn't care much about like those who are good. His main priority seems to be to look after his cockroach army, almost as their de facto patriarch. They follow his orders with slavish obedience, and he does his best to look after their well-being. On a side note, it seems he's not much of a fan of Entoma, as when she gets really hungry, she sometimes snacks on his cockroaches. But also like Entoma, Hyohuko is an Entomancer of two levels, meaning a mage that summons, controls, and powers up allied insects. In his case, he commands the aforementioned cockroaches. The Entomancer functionality is not just provided by the class Entomancer, but also enhanced and supported by other classes with related functionality. For instance, he has 15 levels in Druid Variants, which is a class that specializes in nature-related spells, usually in the form of nature-themed buffs, controlling plants, and the summoning and control of various animals. Druid describes a kind of high-ranking priest from ancient Celtic religions. It became quite popular in fantasy fiction and video games to signify divine spellcasters whose powers, unlike clerics, were not derived from a god, but rather nature itself. Druid is likely a base class of Entomancer, as one needs general druid proficiency before one can specialize in druid-style magic, specifically those related to insects. So to be exact, 
Kyohoko is an insect druid of 10 levels, a racial class available only to insectoid heteromorphs, and presumably it provides similar abilities to that of a regular druid. If we were to speculate from his insect-themed druid build, perhaps he can summon a swarm of insects to harass his enemies, or create spore plants that fill the air with some kind of fungi that function like some kind of poison or disease debuff. Such abilities may also be available to regular druids, but it would make sense if insect druids have more spells like that in exchange for less of other kinds of spells. As for his remaining two racial levels, those remain a bit of a mystery, though it's presumably some kind of basic insectoid heteromorph, something likely related to his cockroach-like appearance. One probably needed a minimum investment into a base racial class before they could specialize in a racial subclass, like Insect Druid, whereas more advanced and powerful racial subclasses, like Demiurge's Archdevil, may require a maxed out base class before you could ascend to that greater form. The racial abilities stemming from an Insectoid aren't exactly clear either. An Insectoid like Cocutus has a type of natural exoskeleton armor as a racial ability, though it prevents him from wearing regular body armor and could never reach the heights of divine quality. They did, however, have their own advantages, like not being dropped on death, cheaper upgrade costs, and would grow with respect to your level. Even the armor repair process wasn't necessary, as healing spells would restore any damage taken. Now, since Kyohoko wears lots of different equipment, like jewelry and a cape, but doesn't wear any body armor, I believe it's a safe assumption that he too has an exoskeleton. Keep in mind though, not all insectoids have natural armor. Touch Me was said to be some kind of insectoid race, but he wears regular armor, so clearly different base insectoid races give different racial abilities. Now, as for his job classes, he has 5 levels in High Druid, presumably to be a class that requires a lower leveled base druid class, but provides more powerful druid abilities including access to higher tier spells. We also see he has Summoner, obviously a class that specializes in summoning but most spellcasting classes have some access to summon spells, so the summoner class isn't really a requirement to be able to use these spells. It's more likely that the summoner class probably becomes available to anyone who has learned a summon spell, and enhances one's existing summon ability, potentially powering them up, reducing their mana cost, increasing their quantity, providing rare enhancements, or letting the user cast a summon spell a few times a day for free. Then his final class is Entomancer, which is a further specialization into summoning and controlling insects, and may even grant one the ability to have insect familiars. The reason I say this is because his insect family are actually explicitly referred to as his familiars. Traditionally, the word was used to refer to a supposed demon that took on the appearance of a benign animal which would secretly serve a witch and do her evil bidding. From there, it became a popular trope in fantasy fiction, though the traditional requirement that they had to be demons was dropped. Generally speaking, powerful spellcasters would use their magic to bind a lesser creature like an animal into service, and in the process, the animal would then become more powerful and intelligent. Mechanics-wise, familiars in Yggdrasil might be sort of a hybrid between summons and NPC mercenaries, as in both were created through magical means, though familiars lasted for an indefinite amount of time, and are summoned using mana. Familiars could also be summoned for use in very unusual ways, as we saw with Entoma's bug weapons, but accessing these rare abilities would require a larger class investment and be limited to a narrow, specific type of creature, allowing for a knowledgeable opponent to appropriately prepare a counter like Evil Eyes Verminbane. Now shifting back to Kyohuko, I guess I never even said what he's the worst of. He carries the title of Worst Residence, something I'm sure you'll agree is well earned. The name is rooted in the fact that he lives with his army of cockroaches, which are, well, pretty scary to be honest. His family, as familiars instead of summons, requires sleep, exercise, food, and so on, and it's that latter part that's important. See, the cockroaches are carnivorous, and he has thousands of them, meaning they require a very large amount of living food each day. It appears that Eins forgot to provide much in the way of food for them, or just told them to find a way to deal with it, because he didn't really want to have to deal with the hassle himself, leading Kyohuko and his cockroaches to have to engage in regular rounds of cannibalism in order to survive. So Heavy Masher, one of the worker groups who invaded Nazarick in Season 3, he got to experience firsthand just how terrifying a room full of starving cockroaches could be. Sure, the anime made it seem pretty devastating to get devoured by a bunch of cockroaches, but 
the way that the light novel describes it is much, much more graphic and explicit. The worst part is, that's not even the worst part. I agree that drowning and then being eaten alive by an ocean of writhing cockroaches is a pretty gruesome way to go, but there's more. Even some of the Guardians, particularly Mare and Aura, find him and his cockroach family to be quite revolting. After all, they know exactly what him and his cockroach horde are supposed to be used for. If you recall back in Season 2, Mare was ordered by Demiurge to locate and kidnap an Eight Fingers leader. The one that he ended up grabbing was Hilma, the leader of the Drug Trade Division. Apparently, he was told to hand her over to Kyohuko, who at the time was under orders to torture her. By what means, you ask? Oh, you know, the usual. Just by having his cockroaches repeatedly devour her internal organs before they were then healed back up again, then just repeat that cycle endlessly. It was after this that she actually became a double agent for Nazarick, ordered to go back to the Eight Fingers and sell out the other division heads, who then proceeded to get the same treatment. This is what resulted in Nazarick's complete control over the Reistes Kingdom's underworld. Though after hearing all this, I feel I have the need to remind you, Kyohuko is still a pretty chill guy, unless he and his cockroaches are particularly hungry, or Nazarick just happens to need a spare torturer that day. Hell, maybe Demiurge was just trying to be nice to his fellow NPCs and kill two birds with one stone. You know, feed Kyohuko and his starving family, while also torture some enemies of Nazarick. After all, the job of torturer really belongs to Neuronist, who, if you remember from the last video, was very good at causing internal suffering and existential terror but still not as good as this next member. Before getting to him, you should know that there is very little known about the last three members of the five worst. They've never appeared on screen and have only been mentioned or alluded to by others, but we do know enough about them to give you at least some information. We'll start with Gasho Kuko Chuo, who I'm just gonna abbreviate as Gasho right now. He's given the title of worst appearance, though since we've never actually seen him, feel free to let your imagination run wild. He's the area guardian of the Large Hole, a region inside Floor 6, the Jungle Floor. His name is Japanese for Sparganum King, but what's a Sparganum? I'm glad you asked. They're a breed of tapeworms native to the east who are fairly well known for causing a rather mortifying infection called Sparganosis. The tapeworms enter your body as larvae in contaminated food or water, and then migrate to some random area in your body and grow inside you eating away at your very flesh until they are several centimeters long. They can appear basically anywhere in your body, including your brain or eyes, though typically they'll appear somewhere on your body just below your skin, like your arm or your chest. Incidentally, the kanji which spells Gashokukochuo also translates to mean hungry, to eat or a meal, fox or sly, insect and king, in that order. Everything making up the kanji seems pretty relevant and self-explanatory, except for fox. So allow me to try to explain. Foxes in Japanese Shinto mythology are intelligent, long-lived spirits who served as messengers of the gods, as well as were sly creatures and tricksters who can shapeshift into humans to play pranks on them. The original word for sparganum included this kanji, read as ko, meaning orphan or alone, which would be a rather unsuitable name for a king. That said, a good alternative to this is this, which can also be pronounced ko and mean silkworm. Assuming Mariyama isn't doing anything too complicated or going for something obscure with the fox kanji, the best interpretation would just be sly, so his name could be translated as the sly ravenous insect king. Meaning that Gasho is a king of parasites who uses humans and animals as hosts. And apparently, he and his family were undergoing a bit of a housing crisis back in the beginning of Season 3. You see, they just didn't have enough homes for all their little Sparganum larvae. Not to fear though, Eins was there to save the day, and he sent down two helpers to resolve the crisis. I mean, there were a lot of helpful workers who showed up to Nazarick looking for a payday. Specifically, I'm sure you remember Hecarin, the leader of Foresight, and Imina, his lover, the half-elf archer. Yep. That's where they ended up after Eins had paralyzed them. Sucks to be them. Just for reference too, Arsh was killed instantly by Shaltir and her body divided up amongst many different servants as food and resources, while Robert Dick was used as an experiment by Eins to determine how divine magic works. He ended up going insane due to the repeated memory modifications that Eins subjected him to. So when you really think about it, Arsh got off pretty easily. But back to Hecarin and Imina. 
Presumably, the two of them would be infected with hundreds of thousands of these little Sparganum creatures. Of course, they would be kept alive, and quite possibly even conscious as long as possible, just so that their bodies wouldn't decay or rot, resulting in suitable homes to breed endless generations of Sparganum worms. Basically, when Hecarin and Imina promised each other that they'd be together forever, well, in a sense, they were right. Just paralyzed and in eternal agonizing pain. But at least they have each other. I mean, true love conquers all, right? Now, moving on to the fourth worst, we have Chakmul, the worst personality. He's the creation of the guild member Temperance and commander of the Eric String Orchestra, a group of greater doppelgangers. Based on the name of the group, it's presumed he may be styled as some kind of evil orchestra conductor. What worst personality refers to though is a little bit vague, but apparently he's similar to Neuronist in that he likes to play around with humans. But if you're getting a bit of a JK Simmons from Whiplash vibe here, don't worry, <laughs> I did too. If I had to guess, he's probably a doppelganger himself that enjoys worming his way into a position of trust and confidence with his target only to end up betraying them in the most shocking and horrifying way possible, just to see the look on their face and relish in their anguish and suffering. That sounds like a pretty bad personality to me, though I think it'd have to be even worse than that for him to top Demiurge and truly earn the title of worst personality. He actually hasn't even been mentioned in any of the official translations, so it's not even clear whether the Chakmul translation of the original Japanese is accurate. Assuming it is though, the name Chakmul is derived from a series of Mesoamerican archaeological sculptures. They are generally either warriors or old women carrying bowls associated with ritual sacrifice and offerings to the gods. So perhaps Chakmul is in some way linked with ritual sacrifice, deceiving victims and luring them in so he can sacrifice them. Or perhaps they are sacrificed to him specifically. Perhaps he steals some part of them, like maybe their worst character trait. If he is a doppelganger like I suggest, he can read their mind to an extent in order to understand their personality. So in the course of sacrificing them, he can add whatever is most awful about them to his personality. A quick side note, Jin4 also came up with a decent shot in the dark theory about how he could be a vampire as well, so I'll pin that as the top comment for your reading pleasure. But that's all we've got on the worst personality. Then we have the least known and final worst of the group, and they don't even have a name yet. It's simply known as the worst arrow. It comes from a blog post by Mariyama, who, if I'm interpreting this Google translation accurately, seemed to suggest that it would probably never appear in the light novel. Anyway, arrow is a Japanese word borrowed from the English word erotic, and used as a synonym for a perversion or sex. So basically, it's a creature known for having the worst perversion. And if you've been around anime long enough, then I think you know exactly what type of monster this thing is. Yup. A tentacle monster. Well, specifically a roper. Apparently, it kind of looks like a cage of tentacles or something like that. He also mentions something about aphrodisiacs that may be classified mechanically as contact poisons, which would presumably cause insanity or confusion. But yeah, we'll stop there. I'm sure you can fill in the blanks. Apparently, though, Worst Arrow has a fairly nice, gentle personality, so it generally reserves its capabilities for hostile invaders of Nazarick. And that's it for the 5 worst of Nazarick. But before I go, don't forget that you can still purchase my Succubay and Nabe merch. Also, next Overlord video will be the Shaltier Part 1 video. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and thanks again to Kakao Games for sponsoring this video. Don't forget, you can use the link in the description to get a free 7 day trial to Black Desert Online. But until next time, ciao!